Today's message I've titled Checking Balance. Checking Balance. How many have a checkbook balance? You got a checkbook? How many got a checkbook? You ain't got no balance, we got a checkbook. I got one somewhere, well, anyway. So it's not just talking about your checkbook, but talking about checking balance. Checking balance in your life as it relates to money and things and materialism and stuff. How you doing? You out of whack? Let's talk about it. Here we go. How much is enough? Say that with me. How much is enough? I'm not going to get into this today, but I'm remodeling a little 1927 house. It's almost done. And a lot of it was done for our guided. I didn't have to do a whole lot. But, but anyway, did you know the bedrooms are 10 by 10? And did you know what else? There's no closets. Because back in 1927, people just didn't have the stuff we have today. A little small kitchen. But you know what's right in the middle of the house? Fireplace. Where they would gather as a family. We've changed, haven't we? You know what I'm saying? How much is enough? Let's talk about it. Here we go. Jesus talked about money more than any other subject other than, you really need to know this, His Father's kingdom. He talked about money more than, you already talking about money. Well, I ain't. Because if you come here, you won't say that about me. Okay? But, you can say it about Jesus. <laughs> he talked about money more than any other subject other than His what? Father's kingdom. Something not on the screen, but in the Bible, in the entire whole Bible, Old and New Testament, money is number two in the whole Bible as the main area of subject other than love. Crazy. Eleven of Jesus' 39 parables deal with what? Money. Eleven of 39. In the book of Luke, one out of every seven verses in the book of Luke deals with what? Money. Amen. Now, because it's like that, now listen to me. Hang on here. Because Jesus talked about money so much, guess what happened? Many preachers and teachers have twisted and warped His teaching. When you turn on Christian TV, especially, you send me a $1,000 for this little handkerchief and God's going to bless you. No, He ain't. I'm sorry. Quote me. I know who's going to get the blessing. The preacher is. Jesus didn't teach anything like that, guys. Are y'all listening to me or not? That's a new teaching. Seed giving and sowing your seed and planting your seed. And I know you might not like me talking like this, but that's the truth. I'd much rather teach what Jesus teaches than what some guy taught me on TV. You understand what I'm saying? Not that they're not good. Many of them are good. Some of them are bad. I'm on TV. I'm one of the bad ones. But anyway... Here we go. Listen. They use it, his teaching, they use it to justify their wealth and prosperity doctrine. Because he talked about it so much. Well, he must have talked about it so much, so it must be true then. Because we don't read our Bible and we're not like the Berean Christians in the New Testament where we check Scripture with Scripture and we compare Scripture with Scripture. When you do that, you're going to find out, hold the phone. Amen. By the way, there is the phone. Hold the phone. Look at that. Let's find out what Jesus taught about money. I've got five little areas we're going to talk about this morning. This is the first area. Let's find out what Jesus said. A little bit. And I'm not going to give you a lot of Scripture because it's so much. You can just go anywhere and almost open the New Testament and find it. But some general things. Jesus' teaching was actually the opposite of what most prosperity preachers teach today. That's what I can't get. What so many teach, His teaching was actually the opposite. How can you do this? And get by with it. Here's some balancing facts that will help you understand what Jesus taught about money. Very important, guys. And listen, listen, we're not just talking TV preachers here. We're talking about us. The way we think about stuff and wealth and prosperity and money and things. And it can screw you up royally and ruin your family. So let's look at what Jesus taught. Several things. First of all, Jesus never taught that wealth and prosperity was something to be desired. Put that in your little prayer pipe and smoke it. 
If you're praying for wealth, if you're praying for prosperity, Jesus never taught you to do that. Jesus consistently taught not to be preoccupied with money and wealth. His teaching consistently would teach you to not be preoccupied with that. But so often we're out of balance. Man, are you kidding me? Not only are we preoccupied, that's what we think about on top. You understand? Especially when the economy goes to hell in a handbasket. You know? Jesus consistently taught and challenged his followers to give money or material support to those in need. That's what you'll see his teaching about all the time. Oh yeah, money, he'll talk about it. Wealth, yeah, he'll talk about it. But you know why he teaches it? Listen, so that you can have it to help folk. Are y'all listening? You mean I'm supposed to have and, and I'm supposed to be helping folk? I thought it was just all about me. <clears throat> Amen. Keep listening. Help me now. Jesus never, these are big words, never. Jesus never taught that it was important to have much money for yourself, but rather to use it to help other people. Isn't that crazy? That's what Jesus taught. So, so much of what we're hearing taught in Jesus' name is not necessarily in what Jesus said. Are y'all listening or not? Are y'all right? Okay. This is the truth, whether you want to accept it or not. This is what Jesus taught, whether you want to believe it or not. And this is the way you should think, whether you want to or not. That's how you should think. You can have money, but money shouldn't have you. And you should be able to help people. That's what we're talking about today. Now, this is just one, one little segment of teaching today I wanted to share with you. But we're going to keep moving. Here's a second thought today. Money is not neutral. Would you say that with me? Money is not neutral. I've had it said to me many times, well, money ain't evil. It's the what of money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Well, I want to argue with you just a little bit. Here we go. Money is not neutral. 1 Timothy 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. I've done a lot of funerals. A lot of them. More than anybody in this room, probably. Okay, other than Pastor Denhart, if he's in the audience. Are you here, Pastor? That guy preached 50 years. Amen. But anyway. But the fact of the matter is, I've never seen a U-Haul yet behind a hearse. You know what I'm saying? I've done a bunch of them. But we hold on to stuff like we're taking it with us. And having food and raiment, let us be what? Content. But they that will be what? Rich. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful what? Lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they've erred from the faith and they pierced themselves, what? Through with many sorrows. Money is not neutral. Let's keep talking, Rog. Here we go. Peter said, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint but willingly, not for filthy lucre. The word means filthy money, but of a ready mind. So money's not neutral. Y'all with me so far? I haven't lost you, have I? See, I can lose you if you don't have any money. You've got to cut me off. I ain't got no money. He ain't talking to me. Keep looking. Come on. So money's not neutral. Money is basically evil. Huh. You calling me evil? No, I ain't calling you evil, but you probably are. But we ain't talking about that right now. Come on. Here we go. Money is basically evil. Why do I say that? Because at its very nature... It defiles those who love it and let it control their lives. What do I mean? Keep looking. You can love a lot of things and it won't defile you. You can love mama. You can love daddy. You can love your little boy, Billy. You can love to cut the grass on Saturday. You can love to go hit the golf ball. You can love a lot of stuff and it won't defile you. But if you love money, it will. See? It's not neutral. It's very nature. It's basically evil. 
We're easily compromised and corrupted by money. Here's a quick test. Have you ever heard, think with me, come on, put your thinking cap on. Have you ever heard of a corrupted politician? Let me see. Here we go. <laughs> Do you understand? Money. Money. It's very important to check your balance here. Check your balance here. Check your balance here. You're thinking on money. You're thinking on stuff. You're thinking on material things. All this stuff can screw you up. You listening or not? How many have ever, I mean really, literally, you have just been, you've been emotionally or mentally a wreck over money before? Can I see your hand? Just mentally screwed up, 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 up. How many of you were screwed up over money, but you still had stuff, you just didn't know you had it? But you let it screw with your head and everything. You understand what I'm saying? Keep looking. Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The light of the body is the eye, and therefore thine eye, if it be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that's in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness! No man can serve two masters, Jesus speaking. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. Say it with me. You cannot serve God and money. Who taught that? Jesus. Amen? Checking balance. How are you doing? Good, me too. Here we go. Follow the money. How do I know how I'm doing, Pastor? Well, follow the money. The way I use my money and view my money is the doctrinal statement of the faith I say I possess. You might think you're all that as a Christian, but you're just supposing all that. How can you know where you're standing really with God? Follow the money. The way you use your money and the way you view your money is one of the best things that you can look at to see how you really are doing in your relationship with God. It's something we all have to do. It's something we all have to use. It's something we all have. How are you doing? Think about it. My attitude and my actions toward money and material things is the true barometer of my heart. There it is right there. Those greenbacks on my heart. The true barometer of my heart is how I use my money and how I view material things and how I help people with it, how I care for people with what I have. And when I lose something, how I react. When I have something, do I think I did it? Do I think I deserve it? Do I think I made myself who I am? I tell you what, it's the barometer of your heart. You understand? Money. Checking balance. So we saw what Jesus taught. We saw that money is not neutral. Number three this morning. Are you all right so far? How many feel like you had a little financial seminar? Well, this is going to get fun. Here we go. You're going to spend some time with Uncle Gary. How many know I'm a cheap man? How many know this? How many know this about me? It's been reported of me. Set your hand down. I've never seen you praise Jesus so much at a service. <laughs> Listen, it's been reported of me that you could see my hinder parts out of a dumpster. It's true. Why wouldn't I go in a dumpster if something's good in it? Why not? Hey, I picked up a towel on my way to the beach yesterday. They shouldn't have dropped it. <laughs> have y'all bought towels lately? Those big ones, they're, they're expensive. How many have been with me in the car and I've actually stopped and got... Put your head down. <laughs> I was in Key West and picked up something on the... Dump and it carried that thing. It was heavy, wasn't it? I carried it for a mile. It was a little statue of a little man that held out his hand and he would keep business cards in it. Have you seen them before? I carried him a mile. When I got there, I stuck him outside the inn, didn't I? Where we were staying. 
I gave it away because I couldn't carry it with me. It lasted 15 minutes. It was fun. Hey, it meant enough to you guys. It was fun enough that you bought me one of those and set it on my, on my house one day. So see, that fine and stuff will help you. Let's do some practical talking this morning. What really matters? What really matters? This is just me talking to you, and you can argue. But what I said so far, I don't think you can have a whole lot of argument with. You can argue with this stuff if you want to, or you can just go sleep on me right now if you'd like. What really matters? It's just what I think. Living with less is best. That doesn't mean I don't have stuff. I've got tons of stuff. I've been blessed with too much stuff. And then you get too much stuff, and it becomes stressful. You know what I'm talking about. I had to sell my boat because I got tired of paying $1,000 fixing it because I wasn't using it. Because I'm doing other stuff instead. And it's crazy. Aren't we crazy? I'm crazy. Maybe you're okay. Here we go. Living with less is best. Let's be practical. Less debt. We're not going to have debt at Fellowship Church. It's just not going to happen. Okay? Why? Because it's best. Yes or no? Of course it is. Less stress. Living with less is less stress in your life. Living with less is less struggle. Struggle in your own life, but struggle inside your house. Y'all fussing at each other. Fighting. Less is best. Okay? How can I live with less? Then, But pastor, you don't understand my bills and I don't have any much money. How can I live with less? Well, it's time to spend some time with Uncle Gary. Amen? I came from absolutely nothing. Okay? Grew up in Rockingham, North Carolina, 109 River Road. Nothing. Okay? And the greatest teacher I ever had in my life to teach me about finances was my mama, who had nothing. She was not ashamed to pick up something by the road. She was not ashamed to take some of that stuff and, and keep it for a while and take it to a little local flea market. She did incredible things. She became the biggest giver that I ever knew of anybody. In relation to what she had and what she gave, I don't know, maybe by the time she, she was murdered, but before her murder, she's probably given 80% of her income. I don't know how she was doing it. Crazy lady she was. But she did some things. She was not proud. She was not so proud she wouldn't go pick up something. She'd slap me if I'd have passed that towel yesterday. You kidding me? I embarrassed Charlie, the drummer, one day. I was up in, uh, around Anna Maria Island, and, and there was a pair of water shoes laying in the road. They were still wet. I pulled over. We got those water shoes. I threw it there. Charlie was in the passenger seat. I threw him over there. And down his feet. He's like, oh, get him away. You remember that, Charlie? There you are. You know it's the truth. Pansy. <laughs> Here we go. How can I live with less? Here it is. Coupons. Sounds funny, don't it? Roger, throw them at me. Go ahead. Throw them at me. Thank you. You go ahead down to Dunkin' Donuts and you pay full price so you can get that thing right there and save you a lot of money. Amen? Good for you. Coupons. Would I walk past a $5 bill laying on the ground? No. But it's beneath many of us to even think about cutting out a coupon or using a coupon. That's insanity. Amen, church? Listen or no? Oh, yes or no? If you don't need the money, use the coupon and give that money to somebody else. Why not? Say or maybe you can use to get the coupons to give to somebody in need. Here's something like, here you go. How about this one? Buy one, get one. Are you kidding me? You're going to give me one if I buy one? And guess what? If you've got a coupon to boot, now you're talking. Amen. That's the way you do it. Listen, see that right there? I'm going to do you a favor right there. You can get you a strawberry, banana, smoothie, or you can get you a, a mocha frappe through the end of July. Go on your computer and you can get that right there. Through the end of July, buy one, get one. Why wouldn't you do that? Say, no, I'd rather pay $6 instead of $3. I'm talking living with less. You can do this, guys. I'm talking about our families, especially our families. 
Or we can gripe about President Obama and the government not giving me enough. I don't care what they give me. If I can make it. You hear me? I'm an American last time I checked. Say, I'm going to vote who gives me stuff. Won't you get off your butt? You hear me today? I know I'm ugly, but come on! I wasn't raised that way. I don't know how you were raised, but if you were raised different, I don't want to be raised like you. I'll be raised by a drunk woman who didn't have anything, and we had to go out and make do. I tell you what, that builds character, guys. You know what I'm saying? And then you get crazy one day, and you think you can do a multi-million dollar facility debt-free. That's a big coupon right there. You know, God, will you cash this? You know what I'm saying? You can do this stuff. Come on. Here we go. How about this one? Buying used. I know you can have problems with a used car. I understand that. But you can also do very well. You can do very well. I'm not saying take your brain and throw it in the garbage can when you go buy something used. But you can buy used things, and it's okay. You know what I'm saying? And I know I'm speaking stuff to some of you. you I mean, this is like old hat stuff that you know. But some of people don't know it in here. And they need to be taught again. Come on, or somebody tell Fix and repair things. I thought I needed a new toilet. You might say, well, no, actually, all I need to do is go to the hardware store, and they got that little thing in the back, your little flapper. It's about $3.99. Or you can call the plumber and spend two fifty. You hear me? I know it's not that easy for some people because they don't have the wherewithal and the know-how, but, but some of us just don't have the initiative. But we sure can complain and gripe, can't we? But in a foreign country, you wouldn't have the toilet or the flapper. Amen, you just have the crapper. Amen. Come on. Listen. Here's a big one. Eating at home. Now, this is the pot called the kettle black, Eddie, because how many know I go out to eat every day? Three times a day I eat out. Hey, look, if you coupon and you can do it and you can get out there and be with people and you're single, have at it. But if you've got a family of three, four, five little kids, and I know Mickey runs a restaurant, so he don't like this talk. But he does. He does. He does. Even though he's a, he's a man of God. He don't, we don't want anybody doing anything that's going to put our families in jeopardy. Right, brother? Amen. But eating at home with a family of four or five or whatever, it's amazing. Right? Right? Right, mamas? Amen. How can I live with less? Oh, here's one. I'm going to really tick you off now. Get in shape. Get fit. Exercise. How does that help me live with less? You keep watching. Get you a bicycle and bike. You don't have to pay the fancy, well, I can't afford the gym. Buy a used bike. How about have you checked your feet? Do this. You hear me? Why is that important? Walking or jogging. Listen, you talk about helping you and getting your balance and it helps you with stress. It's incredible. But how can this help me live with less, Pastor? Because of this. Healthy living will bring balance in your life. What do I mean? Less meds. More people I know are on so many medicines, it's killing them financially. And I know there's certain situations. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. But you know this is the truth, guys. Come on. Less sickness means what? More energy, which means I can go to work. And I can have more quality time with those that I love and those that I care for. These are just living with less is what? It's best, guys. So it's just my little time with you. That was segment number three in the message today. Four and five will go. Here we go. Really important. Less is better. You know why? I don't know why. Because we have so much, we can become ungrateful and unthankful. That's why less is really better. 
We can have so much and we can become unthankful and ungrateful. More money and material things become common to us. It just becomes common to us, common to us, common to us. How many can remember years ago your first car? Amen. How many years ago your first car was a used car? How many years ago that first car you were excited about it? How many now you wouldn't even drive such a thing? You see what I'm saying? We get more and more and more and better and better and better. And we remember our first little house. Maybe how we lived in just half of it because the other half won't complete it. And we were fine, weren't we? But if we had to live like that, now, oh, God help us, I'd never do that. Well, then the economy goes in the tank and you just might be surprised at what you have to do. Christians ought to be leading on this, by the way. We overlook many blessings because we have so much. We think we did it. We think we deserve all this stuff. It's craziness. You would think the more and more stuff would equal more and more gratitude and appreciation. But usually that's not the way it is. More and more stuff leads to more and more dissatisfaction, stress, and not being grateful because I need more. I know it's crazy. I don't understand it. But like I told you, there's something crazy about it. Okay, let's keep looking. Help me here. I have a tendency to make children cry. <laughs> Amen. We do have a little nursery if I can help you with that. Okay, here we go. Two big questions. Two big questions. Are you listening? Hang in here with me. Two big questions. Are you grateful? And I'm not trying to put you down today. I'm trying to get you to check your balance. You should be. I should be. Most aren't. Most aren't. Most aren't. Most people I meet. Jesus actually, a story in the Bible. Listen to the story. It's not a story. It really happened. It's not a parable. As Jesus entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. Their skin was rotting off their bones, off their, off their body. They stood afar off. They were outside the city. That's where they were banished to be. So when Jesus came into that city, they lifted up their voices. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were what? They were cleansed as they went. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. How many? You think if your skin was rotten off your body and somebody healed you, don't you think all of them would turn around and say thank you? One of them did it. He fell on his face, he gave him thanks, and he was a what? He was an outcast. He was a half-breed. He was somebody that people wouldn't even have anything to do with. So much for religion. And Jesus answering and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the what? They're not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go your way. Your faith hath made you whole. Amen. What a lesson for us to be grateful. Amen. I want to be one in ten. Would you say that with me? I want to be, one more time, I want to be, I want to be, that's who I want to be. I want to be one in ten. It's grateful to God, man. Let your attitude be gratitude, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is clear teaching throughout the Bible. In everything give thanks for this is the will of what? Many people want to know, what's the will of God for my life for you to be thankful every day? That's the will of God for your life. Every single time, every day you're thankful. Amen? When you hear the griping on the news, you go, no, I'm not going to do that. You turn it off or you turn away from it. Or you, I'm telling you. I'm not talking about sticking your head in the sand, but I'm talking about guard your spirit. Don't you let your spirit get to where you're one of, of uh, ungratitude. Amen? Check your balance, man. Keep going. Also, how can I be a score, uh, grateful? Well, don't be a scorekeeper. I've got to go through this really fast. Don't be a scorekeeper. An ungrateful spirit often comes when we look at what others have and what we don't have. Okay? We start keeping score. Well, so-and-so got a new plan. And so-and-so, and they got a raise. And I didn't. Have you, caught, have you ever thought maybe they're just a harder worker than you? Say. Yeah, but it ain't fair. It ain't fair. You hear me? Being a scorekeeper. Last time I checked, keeping score will sideline you. By the way, that's where scorekeepers sit. That's where scorekeepers sit, is on the sidelines. They're not in the game of grad. They're not in the game. You understand? A scorekeeper? Don't keep score. 
If you want to keep score, just keep all the blessings score. Keep all that score. Woo! God bless me here, and God bless me there, and God bless me here, and God bless me there, and God bless me. That's good. That kind of scorekeeping is good. Amen? But not against your neighbor or against a friend or somebody else you know or somebody at work or somebody. You hear me? Yes or no? Get in the game of gratitude. The last thing, the fifth thing this morning. So we talked about gratitude. The last one is this. Are you giving? Are you giving? Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his what? The thing which is good that he may have to give to him that's in need. You and I are to work with our hands. You and I are to work jobs that are good. By the way, you can't be selling drugs. Amen. And in your business, you can't be a crook. Matter of fact, I've said it before. If you're crooked in your business dealings and I have anything to do with you at Fellowship Church, I pray God's curse on your life. I pray you go down so hard it ain't even funny. I pray you lose everything because you're a sorry, no good businessman or woman. Did you hear me today? That's horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible. Amen. Yes or no? How many like to go to somebody and get cheated? Can I see your hand? Then why should we at Fellowship Church condone or promote anything like that? You hear me? So I'll put you on notice today. If you're a business person, businesswoman in this this congregation, listen to me. It's not going to fly. Amen? That's not what we do, guys. The thief says, what's yours I'll take. The selfish says what's mine is mine. But listen, the giver says what I have is a gift from God and I'll share it. Amen? That's the teaching of Jesus. That last one. Amen? Come on. Giving is motivated by the Spirit. Interesting thing, Jesus said, if you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has ought against you, you've wronged your brother, leave your gift. Giving's important. Leave your gift before the altar. But go your way first and be reconciled to your brother and then come and give. Amen? Your spirit is far more important than that thing you're giving. You listening or not? That's why we say here at, church, at, at fellowship, if you can't give cheerfully, keep it. What do I mean by that? If you don't have that right spirit, wow, you need to really deal with that and then bring your gift. You know, Does that make sense? Giving is really motivated by the Spirit. Giving happens on purpose. Would you say that with me? Giving happens on purpose. I have heard so many people, many of you have said it in fun, but you're going to help me build the building when you win the what? Lottery. I ain't counting on it. Not you winning the lottery. I ain't counting on you helping me. Because if you don't help me with the $5 you have, I don't expect you to help me with the $2 million when you get it. You understand? Sorry! Giving happens on purpose. If you're faithful in the little things, He'll make you ruler over many things, He says. Amen? Giving happens on purpose. But this I say, He which sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. He which sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man according as he what? Purposes in his what? Heart. So let him give, not grudgingly, not of necessity, for God loves a what? Right out of the Bible, guys. It's what God loves. Don't you want to give when you give? Let's say when you give here on Sunday. Don't you want to when you give? Isn't it great to go and know God just loved that? God just loved what I did. Isn't that nice? What can I do for God anyway? This is one thing he says God loves a cheerful giver. When we help somebody. And we do it that way. Wow. God loved that, what I just did. We don't need to brag to everybody about it. God loved it. Amen. Good stuff, guys. Uh Uh-oh, we've got a famous quote. You will never become a giver on accident. Who said that? I did. I'm going to be famous, I'm telling you. It's going to happen one day when I'm dead and gone. Listen, you'll never become a giver on accident. You'll never stumble into being a giver. 
You're going to give because you purpose to do it. You hear me today? Checking your balance. Just checking our balance today. It really wasn't about our checkbook balance at all. What did I learn today? Here we go. Number one, don't be preoccupied with money or getting wealth. Don't be preoccupied with doing that. Number one, don't do that. Check your balance. If you are doing it, stop. Work hard on that. Don't be preoccupied with getting wealth. I'm not talking about paying your bills and things like that. Don't get me wrong. You can't just wish it away. You've got to work on it. But don't be preoccupied with money or getting wealth. Number two, know that money is not neutral, so be what? Careful. Be careful. Be careful. Number three, realize that living with less is best. And I'm sort of on a quest right now because of some personal things in my life that not necessarily I brought on myself. It doesn't matter. I still have to deal with stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I'm on that quest for my, on my, my, myself. So I'll go down that path with you if you'd like to. Living with less is best. Number four, let your attitude be gratitude. Gratitude. Remember the story. I want to be one out of how many? I want to be one out of ten. And then the last thing is, accept giving as a personal responsibility. Going down to the local store and getting the lottery ticket is never going to turn you into a giver. You're going to, happen, you're going to be one of those with the, with the dollar you can give now or the $5 or the $20, you know, or the help that you can give your neighbor. It's going to be you're doing it on purpose. Amen? Are we done, Raj? What we learned? Is that it? Checking balance. Say it with me. How much is enough? Don't you think we're blessed? Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, we're blessed. You blessed us, Lord. Yes, you have.